everybody this is episode two of db's best bets presented by full-time roundup where we bet soccer overs especially um so just a little housekeeping before we get started um i'm joined by my buddy harrison again and a little background on harrison so matt the co-host for full-time roundup does not gamble and uh, this show wouldn't be as fun if it was just me talking to myself. So I thought there'd be nothing greater than Harrison joining me for this. Um, so first week, we're going to go ahead and jump right in on how we did in the Champions League in the Europa League. And then um, we'll kind of go from there and what we have for this weekend slate. Um, so let's let's just jump right into it. So for me... I had over three uh, for Manchester City, Copenhagen, which was uh, a kind of a sweat, honestly. I was not very happy about it, but it ended up cashing. So I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat, you know, I, I wish I didn't have to sweat some of these bets that I did, but I'm still thankful that it hit. Um, over three in Leipzig, Real Madrid, thanks to Andrew Lunen, um, did not hit. Um, I think, you know, Sometimes you lose bets and you'd bet it again if you could. And this is probably one of those games where I would I would do that. Um, now, you did predict a 1-0 Real Madrid game, so you had the script apparently. And I also said 3-1 City, COVID hanging. So we're both on to something at least. Um, we, know, we know ball a little bit. We do know bit. ball just a little bit. Um, over three, Sporting Lisbon, Young Boys. I mean, it was at a push at halftime, so that was never really – and Dow, I also had a lean on uh, Sporting Lisbon money line, so that was a nice hit for me. Um, over two and a half, Ren Ajax, that was a no sweat cash. Um, I think they scored the third within in the fiftieth minute or something like that. So that was nice. Uh, I thought Ren would, you know, put put up more of a fight. Honestly, didn't think that all three goals would come from this Milan team, but a Rafa Leal. About the, the former Chelsea man, the Chelsea rejects Giroud, RLC, Pulisic, and you had Musa in the starting XI. It was it was very interesting. Um, and then over three, Boda Glint and Ajax, and it was two nil <laughs> until the 87th minute, and there was a penalty, red card, and then Steven Berghaus, I could smooch you with a nice little cheeky chip in the 97th minute for the cash um i also my other leans were benfica um over which was either a push or a small win if you had the two and a half um and i'm trying to think if there was any more leans i didn't really have any leans for the the other champions league slate but we do went two for two for any time goal scores which is not bad not bad and then uh do you want to go ahead and recap what what you had yeah, um, Man City halftime and full time money line was also a bit of a sweat. I told you on that. I was texting you about it. I told you. I, I mean, Ederson had me in shambles for a little bit, and he then did. I believe it was Bernardo Silva who uh, cashed at halftime, and then Man City were able to finish it off. Had Holland any time in that game? Had Pain. some amazing chances at the end. <laughs> um. So that didn't hit, but we at least won the halftime full time. Bayern, um, that was ugly. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I told you I, I can't trust this Bayern side. I expected a much better performance after what they showed against Leverkusen, and they did start okay. And then it's just they're playing really slow right now. And we saw this at the end of the Thomas Tuchel era at Chelsea. It's like just takes a while for the ball to move, and that's what it was the second half. And then, of course, Super McConnell red card and kind of ruined that, as well as the Kane goal score. Uh, PSG Real Sociedad, good performance from PSG. We had their money line. That was a nice cash. And then the Europa League today, uh, Roma Feyenoord over two and a half. Uh, tough one, ended 1-1. One, one. Definitely some chances. Feyenoord hit the post in stoppage time. That free kick was almost money. Yeah. That was uh that was a tough one. We were close we were close to that two one score line that we predicted. Um, that's one of those that you still would bet probably, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean 
both teams have been flying over the last couple of games. It was, uh, yeah, I mean, I'd bet it again for sure. Santi, uh, Santiago Jimenez didn't get the nod too, which that when I yeah. saw that, that was a dagger. Yeah, yeah, that that hurt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> young boys, Lisbon. I did, uh, I did end up tailing your lean on Lisbon money line, so that was nice. And Jokerish, uh found the note with a penalty, which was lovely to see. And then lastly, I had Benfica Braga and. Braga. Braga, what <laughs> was that, dude? Oh my god. Braga did not show up today. Benfica, of course, won late, but uh yeah, that didn't hit. But overall, it was around 500. Um, so can't really complain. Would would have liked to be Daniel this week with his overs going crazy, but that's all good. We move on. Yeah. Uh I believe four and one in straight bets, and then my leans were were all uh other than the props were were money so hopefully we can bring this hot midweek form into into the weekend um and you know pay for some bar tabs and and whatnot and whatever we like to do on the weekends um but before before we jump into what we have today just again you know this will be only on youtube so please subscribe um we also me and matt did an early recording session this morning so listen to you know um us break down the champions league games predict some weekend fixtures and then we had some really cool discussion points that uh, were a lot of fun so definitely go listen to that on all streaming platforms as well as youtube it's just audio only um and uh you know rate five stars download the episode so we can get some good analytics going and and kind of let's go from there so Let's jump right into it. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Hopefully, uh, it does not move like it was last time. It was fairly annoying. Um, but we, I, I mean, personally, I usually spread out the bets on a bunch of different leagues. Um, but I really only loved the Premier League slate, to be honest, this weekend. So, um, it's going to be Premier League focused for the most part, but that's just because that's just how the lines be sometimes. So can't really can't really fault us for that. But I'm going to start because the Dutch league would not come up. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start with a lean here. Um, my lean is uh, PSV over four tomorrow on a Friday. If you want your Friday fix in there, I'm checking who they're playing. I, I honestly forgot. Over four. I, Her put they play Heracles and that is a high number for an over, but I I I think they're gonna clear that. They're gonna be, you know, they play a Friday game and then they play on Tuesday, so they'll have plenty of rest. So I think they're gonna, you know, wanna wanna establish their dominance. I would love to see Pepe in this game personally, but we'll see. Um, but that's that's just my first lean, but I'll I'll go ahead and Get right into it. Let's we can do a little alternating, and if we have the same bet, then I guess we can celebrate. So, getting right into uh, first game of the weekend: Brentford versus Liverpool. Um, yeah, pencil me in on the over three and a half there. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I mean, Liverpool's flying, even with Salah. It's pretty impressive what they're doing. I don't have the over, but I do like Liverpool to win. Um, pretty short number on. Or, I mean, not a bad number, even if you want to like test it on a straight bet at minus one seventy five. But I think Liverpool, with the way they're playing, they win this game at Brentford. Yeah, I think that probably the better investment, if you think Liverpool is going to win, is either throw it in the leg of a, a parlay or take the minus one. I'm not going to take the minus one just because I think Brentford is a sneaky opponent. We saw that against City uh, a week ago, but I think uh, minus one seventy five, you might see that coming shortly so over three and a half is my first play um i lean oh see sorry. Brentford keep, that's okay i could see brentford keeping it kind of close in the first half and then pull away from liverpool in the second half just seems like a big game they'll be amped up first 45 minutes and then liverpool will start to assert their dominance so i could i mean but i expect goals also the egyptian king will be back as well probably on the bench so that second half could go crazy if he makes his uh, long-awaited appearance. That it's been a while for for Mo Salah. Um, I'm gonna I lean over three 
in in the Arsenal Burnley game. Burnley just piss goals defensively, and Arsenal have been hot as of late. Uh, it's at a safe number at over three as well. Um, I'm, it's not going to be on my card, but I, I lean over three Burnley as well. Or sorry, or, uh, over three Arsenal Burnley, um, and I think Arsenal are going to fairly cakewalk this match. Yeah, so do I. I mean, talk about also hot. They're in form. I think they've won four or five in a row now. What they did to West Ham last week was disrespectful. Um, yeah, that was just sad. Um, and I I fear for Burnley also. Um, they've just been allowing a ton of goals recently. I could see Arsenal putting up three or four on them, honestly. And they should. I mean, Burnley probably will. Mm, 3-0, I could see. So you'd be pushing the over number. Maybe Burnley sneak one, but I think Arsenal continues to just run rapid. Absolutely. Um, Fulham, Aston Villa, don't – Yeah, I think you have a play in this game, don't you? Yeah. I'm a little down on Villa right now. I mean, you know, it's bad when Chelsea walks into their house and beats them pretty handily. And, man, you did the same thing last week. And I know Fulham, they've been kind of middling this whole year, but – Aston Villa just seem to be on the down right now. And at plus half at home with Fulham, I don't mind that number. And so I'm going to hope that they squeak out a win or draw this game. So I like Fulham plus half. Interesting. Yeah, I'm staying away because I used to back Aston Villa weekly, and I just can't do that after the last couple of weeks. Uh, so you don't know if you're going to get an Emory Masterclass or it's going to be a disaster. Um, so... I really, I really can't tell, but I, I would, I'm going to have another lean here. I'm going to lean the over again, which you're probably thinking to yourself, Daniel, that's a lot of overs, um, <laughs> but this is, this is my bread and butter. This is what I do. So, um, but that's like, I would say probably I, I broke it down for Harrison over text the other day. I said, I probably 80% of my bets, maybe 75 are overs like 15 are like spreads and then the 10 the other 10 five percent is like throwing a couple of money lines in a parlay so that's kind of what i found my niche in um but just to let the listeners know as we're still getting started um newcastle bournemouth uh what do you what do you think on this one uh i like the over three and a half or three i guess on bovado there um this feels like it just feels like certain games at Newcastle where there's teams, <laughs> there's games where you just feel like a lot of goals will be scored. And I feel like Newcastle will put up three in this game. I just feel that. I, I mean, I have Alexander Isak to score in this game as well. He might be injured, by the way. Um, I saw a report he that he's out and Callum Molson might be out as well. So that's why it was supposed to be on my card, but I took it off because I saw the injury report. We can do a little live time research real quick. Um, uh, should be part here, just growing. Here, just growing. We can take uh, scratch that, that, scratch that, scratch that. No more, uh, uh, scratch the anytime, but I still like the over. Uh, <laughs> again, like I said, this feels like a game, there's going to be goals. Newcastle can be leaky, and but they also have firepower going forward. Anthony Gordon's had a great year. Um, Almy Roan still is a threat on the right side, so yeah, I like goals at Newcastle this weekend, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lean this one just because of the strikers out, but I do in, in just like, if you just like put a gun to my head and didn't tell me the injury report, I'd probably lean over for sure. Um, any plays on forest West Ham? I'll pass. Uh, yeah. I don't want yeah. any part of that. I want no part of that game. It's gross. So gross. Uh, we have a uh, Tottenham and Wolverhampton Wanderers. Got this one on my card. I think we both do. Yeah. Over three and a half. Yeah. Lock yeah. in. Yeah, I like that. Drop I mean, in. Wolves games cra- recently have been crazy. Uh, I mean, I, I just feel like Tottenham have been scoring goals all season, and Wolves have shown a li- that they have a little offensive firepower themselves recently. So I think that there will be at least four in this game. So three and a half for me. I like that especially with how Tottenham's been going crazy offensively this year. Yeah, we haven't even mentioned how bad those teams are defensively as well at times. So, yeah, um, big overmatch for me. Yeah. Big, 
And Human Son should be in the starting XI. That's going to help the cause quite a bit. I think and James Madison's back now. This might fly over. Um, Good players. Good and players. the last game on the docket here um, for Saturday, City versus Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh. Are you oh. – I know Matt is – we talked about it today. He is – worried are you are you in the same camp or do you have this foolish exuberance of how chelsea are gonna upset city here my heart my heart is my heart believes in the boys um but this almost feels like it'll be like it was at anfield for me um and i know we've played well the last two games but we haven't seen enough consistency from Chelsea to believe in them necessarily. Uh, I, if I'm taking anything this game, I'm taking the over. Chelsea have shown that they can get a goal, but the issue is, especially with a team like Man City, can they keep them out of their net? And I'm a little worried about with De Bruyne back, and I know we saw 4-4 at Chelsea earlier this year, and that was with no De Bruyne. Um, with De Bruyne, Foden, and Holland all playing the way they are, I'm nervous <laughs> this weekend. So I'm not going to take Chelsea money line, even though maybe I could put a little sprinkle as a fan. I'm not going to do that. But I will take the over just because I think there will be goals similar to how it was at Stanford Bridge earlier. Yeah. Number one rule in gambling, don't think with your heart, think with your mind. And I have been going through the motions – of if I'm going to take over three and a half, if I'm going to take City minus one and a half, or I'm going to take both, I do not know. I'm still <laughs> undecided. I'm definitely taking the over three and a half. Now, there might be a last minute decision where I take City minus one and a half after seeing the starting lineup. Chelsea, like, weirdly played City super well. Mm -hmm. That first game, I remember I had City big time, and I could not believe what I was watching at the end of that game. So I'm a little scarred from that. Um, so I might hunt for a live line, but City money line will definitely be in the parlay a thousand percent. Um, I now, think that Ch Chelsea might need a Petrovic masterclass to avoid keeping three out of their net. Honestly, that's what I think. Um, so I feel like the over should get there. I mean, we're talking Tim Howard against Ghana type performance, or was that Germany? I can't remember, but that was he had like a thousand saves. Belgium, Belgium, shit, my bad. Um, all right, and Jordan then on Green. Sunday, <laughs> we got <laughs> Sheffield United and Brighton. Pretty gross game. I don't think you have any plays here. Me neither. No, I don't. Um, but we have an intriguing game with United uh, versus Luton, and. I'm going to go ahead and pencil me on the over three. I'm right there with you. Let's go. Let's this game go. Feels, this game feels wide open. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I mean, <laughs> I think they might be five in this game. Uh, Maybe all spread? Not, we'll... not going to not gonna early call it or anything like that. But I, I think the over at three definitely gets there. Um, yeah, Luton Town just played in a crazy game. Man City or Man U has played in some crazy games, especially recently against Wolves. Hoyland's this game hot. Hoyland is hot. hot. Hoyland's hot. Man U's playing great. I think that. Uh, yeah, I think we easily get over three here. Especially because it's at Luton. Luton has been historically good at home. They usually get at least one goal. I yeah, I don't think we're going to sweat this one at all. Knock on wood. Um, let's see here. And let me check, just check in. Okay, so I think we might have a play in the Bundesliga, so we're going to go down to that. I had nothing in the, the Spanish league. It's all gross to me. Don't want to even look at it. Um, so just to kick it right off, love Stuttgart as a money line in the parlay. Um, I wouldn't take one and a half, but I, I think Stuttgart going to have their way with, with Darmstadt, who's – inherently terrible um so i like them a lot but i know you have a, a a big bet in against my dear buyer which i'm taking offense to this is a pure 
This is a gut play. Uh, <laughs> there's not a whole lot of research here, I'll be honest. There isn't. This is purely regression for me. And I just feel like Heidenheim at home, they've had a they've actually had a decent season. Um I feel like it might be a tough game for Leverkusen, especially off a super emotional win against Bayern. I think that they could take a little bit of a step back here. I'm not going to play Heidenheim money line or anything like that, but I like the spread at one and a half. It feels like it could be a one goal tight game. So yeah, I like the the home guys to keep it close. We actually said the exact same thing on the podcast for the predictions. I said it'd probably be like a, a 90th minute winner. If if Bayer win this game, it'll be like a late stoppage time winner. Um, I still yeah. do think that Bayer win this game, but Heidenheim are not a team to joke around with. They they are legit somehow, some way. So I do have to agree with you. Leverkusen pushed them around easily earlier this year at Leverkusen, but this just isn't the same Heidenheim Heidenheim team as they were earlier this year. So I expect a close one. I, I actually do agree with that a lot. Um there might be some value in Hoffenheim. Coach uh, Matarazzo has his back against the wall. Um, he probably will get sacked if they lose or tie this game. So maybe if you want to do a little dive into that, but I'm not going to even touch that with a 10-foot pole. I'm completely done with even looking at Bayern Munich lines. They disgust me. And every, I might start fading them, to be honest. You think, you think Tuchel gets sacked? Um I think they'd be smart too if they want to salvage anything from the season. Um, and then Mourinho on speed dial. Hansi Flick is what I said today. Um, <laughs> bring him back for the rest of the season. And then, uh, I mean, Wolfsburg, Dortmund, you never know what Dortmund you're going to get. So I just don't really like them that much. So I'm not going to touch them. Um, and then I found one bet in the Italian league that I'm going to go to now. Um, as a, as a, I love Inter Milan as a parlay piece, so they'll probably find their way up in, in my parlay. Um, and let's see here. Uh, where is it? Frozione Roma. Roma, Roma has been playing well. They did just get off a, a, a tough draw in the Netherlands today. So if you incorporate travel, you might, you know, be a little hesitant. I'm not because Frozione is catastrophically bad defensively. And and I just think Roma should have enough juice in the tank to to take this over. Um so I'm that's my last play at over two and a half or three. Depends on what you want to play. Um I'm just gonna kind of live hunt, not live hunt, but I'm gonna just hunt for a good line. If it's at two and a half or it's i'll just buy up to three it really depends so I'll, I'll let everyone know what i end up what number i get it at but i'm definitely this is going to be on the card for sure and so i know you have some prop plays but i thought i looked at our parlays that we both kind of worked on so hard and we kind of had some of the same so why not just make it together right sure Gang is caring so uh, line number one that we both have is Liverpool. Liver die mm -hmm. by the sword. Number two, Arsenal. No brainer. Has to. Number <laughs> number three, are you willing to take City? I, mm. uh, for the wallet, yeah. Yeah, for the wallet. But then I'm almost hoping it doesn't hit. But yes. For the, it's, for, it's at the empty for, head. No, yeah, yeah. They win. They win. Yeah. So, all right. So Liverpool, Arsenal, and City. Mm -hmm. And then you had Atalanta and Inter, and I had Inter and Stuttgart. So right. what would Returning. you – are you five. very convicted on Atalanta? I mean, I can I can be uh, convinced off of it. Their top goal scorer, Lookman, might not play, but also – Let me get to uh, who they playing. They're playing Sassuolo. Who's yeah, Sassuolo is not very good. Very poor. Atalanta at home. They still have guys like Zapata who can put the put the ball in the net. Um, I can be talked off Atalanta. Um, 
And I know Stuttgart, Stuttgart's been great this year. I feel like Enter's a lock. I think Enter should be added. So we're, just, I mean, we're they're between... minus they're minus six hundred at this. Like, I mean, I just feel like that yeah, is true. Just put them in there, unless you want the crazy value on the other side of it. I mean, we can go five legs. So why don't yeah, we throw fine. Enter and then should we for Atalanta Stuttgart? Which one do you feel better about? Darmstadt is boo boo, but so is Sassuolo. Let's see. I like it. I like Atlanta at home. Stuttgart, 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 Stuttgart on the way, road. so that might be yeah. the deciding factor here. Let's, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know a whole lot, honestly, about Darmstadt's atmosphere and all that, but uh, I like Atlanta at home against one of the worst teams in Syria. Well, they're. It can't be too bad, or it can't be too good because they have 12 points at the bottom of the Bundesliga. But you know what? I'm a writer. It so might show up. This never know. Last form or recent form has been awful. I'm a big De Ketelare guy, so Atalanta it is. So let's recap here: City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Inter, Atalanta. Five. I like it. I like that. And I don't yeah, know yeah, what yeah. that's going to yield, but that should have pretty damn good value if you ask me um, what a juice. now go ahead and show the listeners what props you got for this for this weekend it's all anytime goal scores um obviously kane and holland didn't hit this week but we did hit yokerish uh and mbappe today and mbappe as well forgot about that one um first one diego jota for Liverpool, this guy, he's one of the best finishers in the world. I might just say that. Um, I'm, put, I'm picking up goals, what you're putting down. <laughs> scoring goals like crazy. Burnley super susceptible at um, defensively. Salah probably coming off the bench. So I feel like it's his show again up top. And I like Jota to score today, or today, this weekend. Uh, Latara Martinez just cooking all year in Syria I don't and especially um against the worst team in Syria I like him to score maybe they'll bench him I don't know they might just give him a rest day but um yeah if he's playing I like his chances to score Love and him. the guy who will probably rip Chelsea's heart out um Phil Foden who's just been a man among boys this year to be honest probably should be one of the first names on the team sheet for England um uh I like his chances to score. Um, if you play a goal or assist, you probably have even better chance there. Um, but he's been scoring goals at a high clip as well. So I like Phil Foden to score against my Blues this weekend. I have a. I just thought of a couple. Um, if sure. Lataro starts, uh, I think that would be a, a no-brainer, like you said. Um, I also think Bukaya Saka goal and our assist. Thought about him. If you wanted to throw that into like the same prop parlay, that I feel like that would have good value, especially against a dogged Burnley. Um, if human start, human son starts, I think a goal and assist is is fairly good value for the City Chelsea match. I mean, you could pick Holland, you could pick KDB, you could pick Foden. They all might hit, or Julian Alvarez if he starts. That's like he somehow finds his way on the goal sheet. We he, usually, out. he usually has some pretty good value. And he has um, great value. The books sleep on him for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, and the last one is Charles de Catalare. He is in frightening form. You mentioned Lookman won't be playing, so they'll be depending on him to bang in a goal or two. So a goal, or if you want goal and assist to be more safe, um, I'd look at that for sure. So that's kind of really all I have. For, for props wise, and I did calculate um, what the parlay would be. Oh, baby. It's three and a half to one. So, not terrible. Not terrible, but still good value for I feel like all those games are, you know, very, very winnable games. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm liking, I'm liking what we're cooking here. And uh, that, yeah, that's, that's really it for me. There are some good games this weekend. So, we should enjoy them. Hopefully, when we reconvene, for for next show um we are we are happier than we were today um well 
you have a lot to be happy about. You hit so many overs. It's a team. It's a team game, Harrison. You're right. Team it's pod. Team, team pod. So, but uh, once again, um, I actually track my stuff that I post that I post on Action. So DB41, if you want to follow me, um, I just put my card out there. So um, hopefully, you see a lot of green this weekend. But uh, as always, please um, like and subscribe, download. And uh, go ahead and listen to our Thursday episode that dropped earlier today um, for to get you ready and pumped up for this weekend. And may the gambling gods be in your favor.